Talk 365 TV's Talking Wellness is brought to you by Certified Hypnotherapy Training School with wellness team expert Dennis Parker. Hey everybody, I'm Holly Love and welcome to Talk 365's special series, Talking Wellness. Today I'm at Certified Hypnotherapy Training School with Dennis Parker. Dennis, thank you so much for letting me come up and chat with you again. Thanks for allowing me to do it. You are over hypnotherapy and mental and I absolutely love this topic, but before meeting you, I have to admit, I, I didn't really understand hypnotherapy or hypnosis really, and how the two worked and how it worked to create wonderful changes in people's lives like I do now. So I wanna start right with that right there. Can we define first of all for everybody what hypnosis is? Hypnosis is simply identified as the states of mind that the mind goes through as you go from being awake to being asleep. There's five observable states of trance, pondering, or hypnosis. All three of those terms are synonymous with us. So they're natural states of mind. Okay. So your first state of altered state of consciousness is what the world normally calls daydreaming. In the church or religious settings, they would call that pondering. So yeah. pondering in religious settings, hypnosis in the clinical setting, daydreaming in everyday verbiage. Okay. It's kind of a matter of semantics. The next state down as we go down towards sleep, we call hypnoidal trance which the world normally calls meditation. Okay. It's where you actually meditate and figure out your problems and so on. Then we go into catalepsy, which is uh, the mid-range level. It's like you're half awake and half asleep. It's kind of a hypnogesic kind of state where you know that you could just as easily fall asleep or just as easy wake up. Then we go into what's called somnambulism. And somnambulism is a state where a person is really uh, off into their imagination and the dictionary definition of a somnambulist is a sleepwalker. Hmm. And then the last state before sleep is called the Esdell state. It was named after Dr. James Esdell because he perfected the inductions, if you will, around how to use the mind for pain control. Mm -hmm. So for deep pain control for surgery or birthing or those kinds of things, uh, it's used a lot for that. And then there's sleep. So to kind of make it as simple as we can, there's consciousness, five levels of hypnosis, which are states of mind where you're not asleep, but in between being conscious and asleep, and then there's sleep. So if you include sleep in trance, there's actually six states of trance, because sleep is trance. Mm -hmm. So when people talk about, you know, they're afraid to go into hypnosis or whatever, it's a matter of just going down to sleep, and you do that every day anyway. As right? you're explaining this, I can almost feel myself and what it feels like to go down into the stages, right. what it feels like to be daydreaming or meditating or all of those things. Sleeping, I need to feel that more, but that's a whole other story for another <laughs> day, right? So that's hypnosis. Um, now explain uh, hypnotherapy, how you're using hypnosis to get great results for people. Hypnotherapy is the use of hypnosis, uh, trance or pondering, Mm -hmm. to gain subconscious access. Consciously, we all think the same. So if we were experiencing an environmental issue like snow, a snowstorm, consciously we would all wear a coat, change our leather shoes for our neoprene sole shoes, leave for work or school early, we would make those adjustments the same. Where our problems in life come in is in our incongruent, rationalized thinking, thinking at the subconscious level. Mm -hmm. So when we have a different set of beliefs, at the subconscious level than we have consciously, that puts us in conflict. We have opposing forces now. So at that level, that's where people experience stress or uh, discomforts in the form of what people can develop as emotionally induced illnesses or emotionally psychosomatically induced illness. So that's like when you have anxiety, exactly. you have depression. Yeah. What we're doing in hypnotherapy is, is we're taking and we're aligning the two minds. Okay. So we want to have the conscious mind be the master of the director and the subconscious to be in alignment with conscious direction. So now when the minds are in alignment, now we're in what's called being single-minded. Mm -hmm. And in a single-minded state, now people can move forward towards their goals, their dreams, without he hesitation, inhibitions, procrastination. So explain exactly what does a hypnotherapist do? Our hypnotherapist, what constitutes a hypnotherapist, if you will? is a person learns how to have somebody else go into each one of these levels intentionally. 
mm -hmm. and how to maintain them at that level intentionally. And then they know how to match up which therapeutic process works best at each trance level. So basically what you're saying is that is how you are using hypnosis in therapy. It gets really fast results. It's super amazing. It's virtually permanent results. But not all hypnotherapy is created equal because there's certain categories of it. Let's talk a little bit about that and explain what the difference is between coming to someone like you and what other people are doing. Most people get hung up around, you know, what they see in stage antics, you know, because the stage hypnotist needs to create the illusion that none of, none of these people are in my power. So a stage hypnotist is a hypnotist or you can get a certification as a master hypnotist. Mm -hmm. That's simply where a person learns how to hypnotize somebody else and has them go down into a, le a level of trance that we just talked about. Yeah, what right. stage would you say you're in? Like daydreaming or which of those stages um, are hypnotists working in? That's, those people are normally in the fourth level of hypnosis down, which is called somnambulism. Okay. And a natural somnambulist in the dictionary definition is a sleepwalker. And they come up and they want to be part of the show or they self-select themselves because they want to see what it's like to get the applause or play along. And, and actually it gives people an excuse to get up and act fun and silly because, you know, hey, I'm hypnotized, I can do Not whatever. my fault. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so they can have fun with it. Now the next level as far as um, what people can learn to do with hypnosis would be suggestion. Yes. And what's that? Okay, suggestion hypnotherapy, that's about 85% of what most people are doing out there that's called hypnotherapy. Okay. What that does is, is that a hypnotherapist will have them go into trance, get trance access to the subconscious, and then normally what it does is it overlays the existing predominant thought with a new predominant thought. Okay. That's what affirmations are all about, auto-suggestions, metaphor story scripts, guided imagery are all about replacing if you can, but generally what happens is you get an overlay. That's why you can buy a tape and do it at home, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So as long as you're listening to the tape and you keep that as your most predominant thought at that point, mm -hmm. uh, then you will make those changes accordingly. But the problem is, is if the underlying original fixed idea or belief system is still in place, even though you've overlaid it and you're now acting out in a new way, if you receive a stimulus back that's similar to what happened in the original belief and it's still intact, then that becomes a more predominant thought again and people go back and act that out it. again. It undoes it. And you're so, back at square one. So now you're back at square one again. Mm -hmm. And so some people have uh, been to hypnotherapy as they call it and they've gotten results for a while and they say, well, yeah, it worked for like three or four months. And then it just kind of quit. Well, what happens is, is they had a new stimulus that reactivated the underlying belief. Mm -hmm. That became the most predominant belief again, and now they act out again with what they did before. It's kind of what happens in yo-yo dieting kind of thing. And as you mentioned, you said that's like 80% of what people are doing out there and calling hypnotherapy, but it is not necessarily the fullness that is hypnotherapy here and, and what it's capable of doing. And that's the clinical hypnotherapy, and that's, that's where it's really cool. Yeah, in, in clinical hypnotherapy, we're doing what we would call an age regression and different gestalt techniques and so on. What that does is, that, again, gives us access to the subconscious mind. But now we have processes to go back and find out what is that original belief. And we want to go down and we want to destructure, reframe, alter the perception of those memories, if you will, and clean out the weeds. Mm -hmm. of the garden of our mind, we call it sometimes. Mm -hmm. So we want to go ahead and pull all these weeds out first. Mm -hmm. So we get all the weeds cleaned out, and now we want to use suggestion, hypnotherapy, and so on to implant those new predominant thoughts. At where that level. At that level, where they're no longer in conflict with existing beliefs. Mm -hmm. Now it becomes more permanent, as you like to say, because mm -hmm. there's not this dual structure still in place for the same behavior. This leads me to talking a little bit about you and why you're different here at the Certified Hypnotherapy Training School. Okay. Because like we said, there are people who are doing hypnotherapy, so perhaps you have had a chance with one of these tapes and you're like, oh gosh, it didn't help, I didn't lose a pound, I didn't quit smoking, or I didn't feel that much better, you know, a few months down the road, those behaviors are back. It is because they are not doing it at the level that you do. You take it even a step further. It is what makes you unique and it's called Positive Mind Management. It's exclusive to Certified Hypnotherapy Training School. It is your discovery, and it has to do with the imagination, how the imagination affects our emotions, and how our emotions drive our behaviors, and if we can control those three, 
we can eliminate the things we don't like about our behaviors. So let's talk about positive mind management because this is your baby and it's what makes you amazing. Okay, what we do differently um, and what we're claiming our discovery is or my discovery we've written books about and so on, what we believe is a more fuller, richer understanding of the subconscious mind. So in the subconscious mind, there's basically three compartments, if you will. There's the imagination, the memories, and our emotions. And what we've learned is, is that we've learned how to teach people to manage their imagination. And the net effect of managing the imagination is, is that if you turn the imagination up or you amplify an image, a thought, a remembrance, whatever, that effect is, is to also simultaneously turn our emotions up. So we've learned how to turn the imagination up and we've also learned how to teach people to turn their imagination down. And when they turn it all the way down, they can turn it off. Therefore, they're also shutting the emotion off. And so that control mentally is one of the huge component differences of what we've learned to do here and we teach as a unique skill, a mental skill used as a tool both with clients and teach our students how to teach others to do that through the school. A certified hypnotherapy training school graduate is basically giving the, given the tools to do what you do. That's right. So if you're looking for some kind of standard to measure who to go to, look and see if they graduated from the Certified Hypnotherapy Training School first and foremost because it's basically like getting Dennis himself who has had years in this industry. So those out there, if they've been inspired, if they've been motivated, they've got the message that I've thrown out that you should come to the class with me because seriously, that's where it's at. What do they do to sign up? And you also are offering a little deal if they mention they saw us on Talk 365. Okay, yeah, if you mention Talk 365, we're gonna throw in your textbook package free. It's about a $200 offer, and uh, we'll include that in the, in the package by mentioning Holly and Talk 365. Love it, do that first and okay. foremost, yes. And then signing up, when are the next classes, what do we do? Uh, you can start class anytime. Uh, we're in a series right now. If you wanted to start today, you could. Uh, we have the textbooks that you would start reading. You have videos to watch in the video library. There's 200 hours of individual training that way that you need to get out of the way. And then there's 100 hours of live trainings when they come up. Now, before we go, I've got to tell you, log on to the website. Log on to CertifiedHypnotherapyTrainingSchool.com because I'm going to keep Dennis a little longer and I'm going to make him talk more in depth about some of these things that are very um, intense, a lot of really mm -hmm. information dense subjects here. We're dealing with from trance, what is hypnotherapy, what is the school, what are you going to learn? So go and log on to his website, then sign up for the school and then be sure and mention that you saw us here today and, and your life will be amazing and you'll say thank you, Holly. Right? <laughs> That's right. Thank no, you. We'll say thank you, Dennis. Honestly, thank you, Dennis. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. All right. Get in here. Sign up. We got class to go to us. Yeah, we got to Let's run. go get them. Enroll now. Classes start soon.